Hi, it's John Binney. Today, I'd like to talk to you about light language. What is it? How do you do it? How did I learn it? And what's it for? And maybe some other stuff too. <laughs> so let's not talk about something for ages without just explaining what it is by doing it. So let me bring forward um, some light language for you at this time. And I've already set up a safe space and I'm going to set the intention to share a message to help ignite the fire in your heart, the passion of love in your heart, to fill your whole being, to allow you to feel clear and abundant and radiating love today. Mea chimia tokonoia makakataya Roniema tokomo chi mie si amaka Umbara kachi chi si mi o unria makatia maka Umbara matatama Uria motuyama And so it is. And so it, to explain a little bit about my feelings of those frequencies and those codes that came through in that message, we're all about connecting up our chakras to begin with, our heart into our heart chakra, into our solar plexus chakra, into our sacral chakra and into our roots, and then connecting deep into Mother Earth. And then bringing up that energy from the core of Mother Earth, from Mother Gaia, up through our chakras. And then at the end, I was bringing forward that, that dragon light language, that fire. And that was blasting away anything that doesn't serve your highest good. And then bringing up those flames, those activations of passion and fire in your heart. And I'd like to say also that... Um, Light language is very much a language of the the recipient. So my understanding and my translation um, is very much, when I speak it, is very much the intention that I set and a reflection of that. And when um, you receive it, you could receive something completely different uh, and, and that it's all okay. Imagine us all looking at the sun together or all looking at a cloud. Maybe a cloud's a better analogy. If we all look at the same cloud together, we'll see different things. And we could say things like, I think that cloud looks like a car. And someone else might say, oh, I think it looks more like a house. There's no wrong answer. And in fact, the cloud to each person is those two different things and, and that that's okay. And... I'll explain a little bit about my journey of light language. I have seen such beautiful souls speak such beautiful languages um, and light languages from lots of different um, galactic races and, and human races. And it is a real honor to be inspired by them. And I won't mention them all because I, I'll probably forget. <laughs> but if, if I explain a little bit about how I started, I started with the uh, beautiful soul, the fascinating fairy. And uh, she's an incredible, incredibly talented and gifted human and soul. And I was really interested and intrigued by her, her light language that she'd share in, in singing and dancing and and like uh, like rapping um, light language, and I connected first through music, and I really wanted to to do it myself. And I asked her. I said, um, I said, fairy, like, how do you do it? And and she said, really, the most helpful thing, and it's really really simple. Um, the most helpful thing for me was remembering when I was a child, the sorts of like. Um, you know, made up languages that, that you would that you would speak. And I used to say a lot of things and I, I can't I can I was thinking about this earlier today in my morning run. I was wondering if I could remember what those languages sounded like. They were they were kind of like a kind of gobbledygook, like a um like a oh like um like oh like these sorts of sounds. Um and I remember the experiences. I remember like being very um, 
excited when I'd speak like that. And I used to say it with a, with a friend and we would very much, it was very playful. And I remember that, that memory that I was kind of reciting there was we were looking at a big oak tree in the park on the, that we'd walk past on the way to school every morning. And it was very much like we were expressing the wonder, like, oh, <laughs> the wonder of the, the world around us. And that was, that was really magical. And, um, and so re- like reconnecting with that vocal exploration was, was super, super helpful. Um, and so that's what I practiced. In fact, I started uh, recording some songs and then I would just sit down and set the intention to, to speak some light language during, during a song. And, and I, I would say the majority of my, my light language in songs is spoken. Some is, is sung. And and I love I love both. I've done I, I've easily done an album of light language songs. I could probably, um, if I could be bothered, <laughs> create like a playlist of all my light language songs. But yeah, there are many uh, in amongst the the two thousand two hundred songs so far. Um, and yeah, so how can you speak light language? I would recommend setting up a safe space setting up a meditation safe space so getting yourself in a, in a clear position you know feeling calm and relaxed and loved and feeling creative and it's really a process of of of, of non like thriving you know of, of don't set expectations but set clear intention so set the intention to bring forward light language. Now you may decide to bring, you could ask um, some like the safest examples to start with would be to bring forward um, like light language, like a soul language from, from your soul. So this is like the language of you, like the DNA of your soul. And I feel like that was some of the earliest light language that came through for me. And it felt really safe because I knew that it didn't really require me to channel from other beings and I could just speak it my, myself. It was like a higher version of me. It's still me saying it. Um, and I remember, uh, and I'm just, just hearing it again very vividly, like some of those first words were like, um, a lot wanted to come out there. Uh, it's like this, for, for me, when I express my my soul language, I remember these lifetimes of where I I trained very hard to learn and connect and un, to be able to to send and receive um, these these languages, and that they were very much an, an expression. You know, like when we uh, I love that that other way of thinking about light languages when you're like improvising when you're singing or, or when you're dancing. It's that freedom of expression, but when you when you see someone doing it, like when they're doing, like you call it like a run um, in, 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 you know, singing or when you're doing like a, a freestyle dance or, or anything like improvised, the, the recipient totally gets it. They, they can see your emotion. They can see if you're happy, if you're sad, um, if like what emotion you're trying to convey. And even if you're not totally 100% sure in the moment, there's this acceptance of allowing that flow and so that's really beautiful. So yeah, I started in in music. You could start by just saying it out loud. Um, there are like loads of other cool cool things about practicing like language. Like it's free, right? And you can you can like say it where wherever you want. Now, r- recently I had a, a a a reading from a dear friend, and they said, oh, it, like in in the session, my guides were saying like speak your dragon like language every day and I was like okay yeah I'll, I'll definitely do that um, and I do it in meditation because I know I'm always going to meditate each day another place I'd love to do it is when I'm in the uh, bathroom <laughs> so if I because bathrooms have amazing acoustics right um, and I go in and I just like speak some you know light language uh, and and I, and I really love that and I, often it's a real release like when we go to the to the bathroom throughout the day, uh, it is like that moment of like stepping out of your of yourself, like you're stepping out of the chaos of the day, even just for a moment. And so I often just like will release some dragon like language, and it'd be like, um, 
and whether other people hear me or not, I if I feel self-conscious about it, I tend to do it a bit more and really play with it and play with my vocal range as I do it. And and I love that. Like, you know, it's it's really hard to criticize yourself and for others to criticize you when you're um you're just playing around. And and I love that exploration. Um so let let's start to talk about some of the uh the kind of wounding that um has happened for many of us either in in past lives or or in this life and there's you know in some um in some religions like they'd call light language like speaking in tongues and that's not i don't see that as good or bad <laughs> it just just is um for for people that have never heard you speak light language or watch others and and judge them um, you know, and and you know, laugh or or mock people that 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 speak these languages. Um, I would, you know, really just hold space for that, right? It's it's part of us in our human condition to be skeptical of of these things. Like we, you know, it sounds pretty crazy when you speak like language, and and that's okay. <laughs> Oh, we're all pretty crazy, right? Um, but the only kind of true like insanity is, you know, is is suppressing these parts of us, um, or like you know, constantly whenever we see that in someone else, like pushing it back down inside of us and saying, "Oh, I can't do that," or "That's not me." Um, and I like when I first started doing some of it, I did get like you know some trolls on. Um, you know, YouTube comments. I uh, I'm pretty sure I still you know still do from time to time, and they'll just say, "Oh, it's the devil's work," or you're like, you know, you're you're speaking like these horrible things, and you know, you're gonna you're gonna harm people with these these words, uh, or your soul is gonna get taken over. Um, a lot of kind of fear mongering, and probably the harder things is when like you know, a friend of a friend or relative says like, "Oh, what's." you know, what's your husband doing? Like, they're like, uh, or your father doing like, that's, that's really strange behavior. Are they okay? <laughs> um, and I feel like everyone has freedom of speech and everyone has freedom of speech in any language they choose. And light language is an incredible way of just being able to, to, to release and to express ourselves in, in ways that traditional languages are constrained. I feel light language is an incredible transmission of um, of light, of energy, of uh, codes. So like these messages that are kind of wrapped around and encoded within like the kind of DNA transmission through the messages themselves. And the most important thing, just like our human languages like English, is to be really, really clear about your intention. So some really simple rules. Don't just like channeling, like don't go and like just open yourself up and, and just say, you know, and, and I'm not even going to say it out loud, um, but but do not open yourself up like this channel where you just want to absorb anything. Like don't do that. Um, what you want to do is be really intentional. So I, so if I'm going to do it just now, let me, let me show you. If I, um, want to bring in some light language. So I'm going to ask one of my guides to bring in some light language. And I, so I'm being very specific. I'm the one asking. I'm the one that's initiating the connection. So I'm going to ask guides. I ask one of you to step forwards to assist with some light language at this time. Okay. And it's my um, dragon guide, or she prefers to be called a, a reptilian. And um, she's very loving and kind. And her name is Lucy. And she's going to uh, come forward and speak some light language. And she's just like holding and she's saying, what would you like me to, to focus on? Like, what's the intention? And I'd like the intention to remove fear from people speaking light language, both speaking and receiving it. Dama ultimir chiki rama karana ama uri imiatama o akama imiatokumu tiki miyama oa oa rama a daramio no yamarana ma. Oh, 
Thank you, Lucy. Um, she was saying that it's very much safe. Uh, she chose to, co to come forwards because we often have the biggest uh, fear around things like dragons and, you know, reptilians as a, as a galactic race do not get a good reputation often. And, and so Lucy wanted to come forwards and say like, well, look at me, like I'm the scariest guide that, uh, that John has <laughs> and that she, um, she wanted to bring forward this, like this message of being very safe and, and for you to know that, you know, our guides are part of us. They're like part of, um, our, our soul group, our, our spirit team. And so when we choose to step into connection with them and, and do so safely, then we are in safe hands and we can express ourselves safely. And so that's a really good, beautiful example of being intentional and then also just allowing to, to come through that, you know, allowing that language to come through. And I also um, want to talk a bit about the expectation. Like, how do you, how do you practice something you don't know how to do and that you're not really learning the language itself. Um, I would say, to answer my own question, <laughs> uh, I would say that the way of thinking about it is that you are improvising. So if someone said to you, go out in your garden or go outside right now and improvise a dance, you know, look at the, um, look at one person in the street and, and dance like you see their energy. And if you did that every day and you chose one person to like interpret uh, every day in, in your dance, then you're learning a lot of the mechanisms, like the practice around it, this kind of modality of you being able to step into a practice, to do a thing with your body, to express. And, but each time you don't expect necessarily to really you know, understand the exact moves you're going to make. It's true when people watch you, when they just like light, light, just light, just like light language, when they hear it, they'll hear patterns. And the the human mind is like, you know, we we're our minds are developed to their programs to be able to spot patterns. We want to be able to understand the languages that people talk to us, just like you know, animals when they talk to us. And so, and that's okay. And it's also okay that when you speak, that you, these patterns come out. Um, and I would say that some people have you know, relatively narrow um, light language patterns. And so this sounds quite repetitive and it sounds much more like a, a, a language that maybe over time you could, you could understand. And then over uh, other people uh, also have like broader um, expansions of light language. And so that their, their variation is incredible. And I know some people who can be very specific about the light language they want to channel and then, um, and then, and then, and choose them. So they are different. The different galactic, galactic races sound quite different when they speak light language. Um, you know, like when I, when I talk to my, um, uh, Mantis guide, uh, she is, um, very much like kind of clicks. And I, she, I always see her like with her hands like this, like her hands and her mouth. And she's, she's talking like this and it's always very much in, in, in the detail. Um, let me see if I can bring her through just now for a minute. Mantis guide, would you assist me please at this time to channel some light language from you to be able to speak the truth of Mantis light language? Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's so lovely. She she was just saying the truth is that so much of the mantis um, uh, race is about finding the magic in every present moment, and the magic is like deep down in, in the detail. So there, there's this belief that the deeper you go into the present moment, the more likely you are to find the magic, and that's why they're all, I always imagine them like digging into into the magic of the moment. Um, so thank you so much for that. It sounded very different. It's so different to to dragon light language, which is so powerful and like this roar. Um, and so in, in my journey, and I started with uh, Lyran light language, which is like lion, uh, 
uh, beings, um, and then into dragon-like language. And so, and they are they do feel like a sliding scale, like the. The the lyre and energy is very powerful. There's a gentle roar, a very loving uh, roar, and um, it's kind of it's it's much less aggressive, but it is like the roars are more of a warning. Um, and then the dragons, kind of further on in the spectrum, are much more fiery, and there is a bit more kind of masculinity and, and aggression there, and also this ability to like send out this fire like these flames that that rage um and can burn away uh things that no longer serve us and i'm just going to check on my battery to make sure that i have plenty okay not bad we're, we're doing okay um <laughs> we have enough <laughs> so yeah my advice is like just play with it you know people um will be scared of 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 anything new and that includes us, right? We can get easily scared of, of something new. And it's okay to share these things without having um, an expectation. But please, 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 if I haven't said it a million times, set clear intention when you choose to speak light language. Um, and are there any other, is there any other advice I can give for, for helping people? Ah, yes. Beware, my dear, of those that are fake. <laughs> um, so it's it's like anything, right? Like you can fake anything. Um, I find it really hard. Like if you if you if you ask me, John, could you fake light language? I find that really hard because, uh, first of all, I find it really hard to lie, especially if I'm like in this in this modality where I. I only want to speak you the truth, speak the truth to you, my truth to you. Um, but, and so I'm not sure that, you know, there's people, there, there's, there's people on every end of the spectrum, right? From, you know, lowest vibration who really want to harm you with, you know, with, the, with intention, no matter with their words. And if, you know, if they want to extend that into light language, they would do that as well, right? And so it's, light language can become more dangerous to receive because you're you're increasing the frequency range of what you'll accept. So if you're watching someone and it doesn't feel right, um, just like if it was words or singing or actions, it's the same with light language. There's just that greater risk with light language that they could be transmitting even more towards you. And more lightly, more than lightly, they would be channeling something uh, subconsciously or, or consciously um, that does not have your highest good at heart. So this is why, when when I when I watch people um, doing light language, I really just pay attention to my heart, what what's coming in, and if it doesn't feel right, like I'm I'm out of there. Like um, whether it's you know virtual or physical, I I just leave. Um, and some of the the signs to look out for when people are, um, you know doing light language without really understanding it. Now I've 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 met people and had, you know, deep conversations with them about, you know, one to one about how they have been very early on on their awakening journey. So not really talking to their spirit guides yet, but they 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 can speak light language. And like that that is real. Like that is that's a real thing. <laughs> there are, you know, you can develop any of these gifts in any order. But the risk of learning a gift without really being connected and be able to connect your intention and be able to use it properly is that it's a bit like having a loaded gun and like running around the place, right? You're like um, without really knowing how to use it. And so, what I find is when I'm when I meet people like that, whether it's a client or I'm, I'm chatting with someone, is to 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 guide them towards that work, that inner work. Like, do your meditation, do your shadow work. You know, clear your channel. Make sure you have a clear body, a clear mind. Continue to work on on raising your vibrations each day. Like that's all a hard journey, right? That all of us, if we choose to, it, you know, go on that journey to to uh, expand our abilities, um, and be really, really intentional. Like it's hard to go wrong if you've got a clear intention. And so set a clear intention whenever you're speaking. Know who it is that you're talking to. You should be. You should be the one always be the one that initiates and asks for something to come through and, and talk to you. Otherwise, you just allow, it's like opening your front door and you're just leaving it open and allowing anyone to wander into your house. 
So that's my my recommendation for sometimes you get a you get a sense when you're watching people like if I'm watching someone uh, say on social media and they're doing light language and it kind of the energy feels like it's all over the place um then that's one you know kind of red flag that you know that they they're not clearly channeling they're not a clear channel and they're not uh channeling with with intention um often people are very exaggerated <laughs> when you know when humans don't know what to do exactly uh, they'll often exaggerate things to to make up for it to, and some of it's a distraction right with like your hands and everything else now i'm not judging people who like who are like super flamboyant with a light language it's all okay it's all good it's just these are the things to 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 visually look out for and just to check in um with with your heart as well and then on the more nefarious side like on the darker side of it like there are beings in this universe that absolutely love to come through humans that are willing to either have a completely open channel or an open channel to them and they'll come through and they want to do you harm and they'll do it through words and actions and videos and you know light language like it doesn't matter they'll do it. they'll it doesn't matter what it is they'll they'll do it and light language is just one of those things that they'll choose to come through and whether the the channel the human is conscious or not of it it's really important for you to to be discerning so listen to your heart you know we're gifted with this magical human heart that just place your hand on it and just feel into whether that that feels right or not don't worry about blocking people and following people you know if you're not sure you can skip the video and always go back to it but if there's something that feels wrong about it that feels off and you know what the darkness's trick is its superpower is illusion and so if you see something that looks good but it feels terrible you know like food that looks good but tastes terrible like your heart will know it and you'll know that that there's deception there there's an illusion there and that you should you know you should not um blindly walk into that into consuming that um and so yeah just be really be be really conscious about who you consume from and that goes for anything in general right but it is also specific to to light language um and finally as we come up on half an hour wow uh, i i will be creating a light language um meditation and so this is a the idea is that it's a meditation a guided meditation uh free of charge so look out for it over the next couple of days um and it will be specifically to allow you to keep practicing in like your daily practice and so you can do it all quietly like all by yourself you can just have your headphones on you can be in a quiet space or you could whisper it or even just do it in your head and because it's a private thing uh for some people and it's also a great way of of doing it um and i'd love to to do it on um on zoom sometime soon as well in one of my workshops so that would be super awesome to share so yeah keep keep a look out on my my website i continue to build out mindfulness meditations and uh what i call spirit guide meditations so these more um these more advanced meditations like a light language one um and i'll also be doing uh meditations that are like for a small fee and so you'll be able to access those as well and so look out for all that plus my free workshops which I'll be doing every month or two and of course all my services uh including in client sessions I teach people how to speak light language with great success you'd be you'd be amazed at how many people are just like I can do it <laughs> like you know within that hour session they're they're talking fluently so yeah if you want any help you know where to find me and i am sending my love from scotland thank you for watching i love you